Welcome. Welcome to Broadmoor Community Church, a church that believes so strongly no matter who you are or where you've been on life's journey, you, you are welcome here. I'm Reverend Ann Cubbage, and it is my privilege and honor to be the senior and lead pastor of this amazing congregation. So I'd invite you to view the slides that will go just after the worship service. They will talk to you about our small group opportunities. We have several. You can do them by Zoom or in person. They also speak to you about our faith formation opportunities. We are so proud of our kids and our youth. They do amazing things in this church and they are truly the lifeblood of Christ's church for our future. I also wanted to let you know about Socktober. Some of you sent in socks. Thank you. We brought in over a thousand pairs of socks for our Westside Cares and Springs Rescue Mission neighbors. They are so needed, especially during the winter. So thank you. I also wanted to let you know that one of the slides that is back there is about giving. There are many ways to give. Your prayers are coveted. Your presence online is just celebrated. You may also give to the ministries of this church. It is through generous givers like you that our youth group has gone from two to 14. What an amazing growth under the leadership of Liz Brailer. We continue to work towards helping our neighbors by having food drives and giving to our B Street Pantry, by taking food periodically to our West Side neighbors for a nice hot brunch. There are all sorts of ways and things that we can participate. I know that you would like to be a part of that. And if you are ever in Colorado Springs, please know that I would love to worship you to this amazing church. We worship at 10 a.m. on Sunday mornings. We are currently wearing masks, so we do take seriously your health and the health of all of our loved ones. I hope that you will now recognize that prayer is also an important part of what we and you do for and with each other. If you need my email, it is on one of those slides at the end, and I would be honored to pray with and for you. And now I invite you to find a candle and to light it in preparation for worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it.
I invite you to join with me in the opening prayer. Let us pray. God, you are the source of all that makes life possible, the giver of all that makes life good. We gather to give you our thanks, yet we confess that we have often failed to live our thankfulness. We too often, God, have taken for granted what we have, and we grumble about what we lack. We have squandered your bounty with little thought of those who will come after us. We are more troubled by the few who have more than by the many who have less. Forgive us, God. In this hour of worship, accept our thanksgiving and teach us to make gratitude and sharing our way of life through the grace of Jesus our Christ. Amen. Hi friends, how are you today? It's Miss Liz, so good to see you as always. So, I have a question for you. Have you ever sat in church maybe with your mom and dad or your grandparents or someone and it's offering time and maybe they pass a plate around and people put in dollar bills or checks, lots of money to give to God. Has that ever happened to you? And have you looked down in your hand and maybe you don't have a lot, maybe a quarter, maybe a couple of dimes that your parents gave to you, maybe just a few pennies. And you think this is not a lot. This is all I have to give to God. And it's just not a lot. Have you felt that way? Well, I have something to tell you. That is enough. Yeah, whatever you have, Whatever you've got to give to God, God looks at you and says, that is perfect. That is enough. Yeah. So you don't have to worry about having more. You don't have to look at the person next to you and wish you had as much as, as they do. You can just give what you have, what in your heart feels right to God. Isn't that pretty great? Do you want to say a prayer to me, with me, and we'll thank God for that, okay? All right, repeat after me, okay? Dear God, thank you for your love. Help me to remember that whatever I have to give to you is enough. Help me to give from my heart. In your name, amen. Thanks, friends, and I'll see you soon.
if your heart is empty or maybe you're just having a bad day remember god is loving you so when you feel afraid friend remember you're in god's hands live with faith as i have said even when you do not understand with god there's enough As a child, I was taught the song and required to sing it ad nauseum. Count your many blessings, name them one by one. This song always seemed like a slap in the face of one family in my church school class. They didn't have anything. And yet, each time we sang the song and recited afterwards the blessings in our lives, their lists and their grins went on and on. Maybe they understood something that I did not. Less is more. I certainly saw this in action in Elkhart, Indiana, as meals were served out of the church's fellowship hall downstairs every noon. Folks who lived under bridges or who lived 15 to a house would line up. The first few always grappled for the best spots in line, but the rest of the folks were much more open-hearted. When a new single mama with a couple tiny ones showed up, the regulars would move this new family closer to the front, even when it was raining. When food was running out, these same folks would begin making peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for themselves in order to leave the warm food for others. And at the annual Thanksgiving feast, those who were the most down and out pleaded to be allowed to help, setting tables, putting out the mouth-watering pies, serving up turkey, green beans, mashed potatoes, dressing, gravy, and cranberries. The head cook was a woman who definitely understood that less is more. Her husband struggled with schizophrenia and could not work. However, they were proud to have qualified for, worked for, paid for, and live in a Habitat for Humanity house. When one of the clients at the kitchen found himself jobless and homeless, she took him in despite the fact that her daughter and their family already lived in the tiny home. Judy. Judy gave and gave, even when it meant that she and her family would have to do without. When the church struggled to meet its budget, Judy, who had become one of its most active members by that time, not only offered creative ideas for cutting expenses, but also jumped in with ways to raise income. Judy's life was full of hardship, but she saw herself as rich rich in family, rich in love, rich in opportunity. Judy recognized that many of the parishioners who had more financially were spiritually and mentally less well off than her clients downstairs. She decided to provide a turkey and all the fixings in a meal upstairs for the congregation the Sunday before Thanksgiving. Now this seemed that it was going to be a logistical nightmare, but Judy marched on with her team of volunteers. Many of the parishioners were not able to navigate the stairs to the fellowship hall, so it was decided that the meal would be served in the two large rooms on ground level. Oh my gosh, what grumbling and naysaying. But as the food was devoured, Smiles and groans of pleasure were heard throughout the church. Elijah's 
encounter with the widow of Zarephath reminds us that we can live out of a sense of scarcity or we can live into God's abundance. We can gather our sticks, hoard what we have, and die. Or we can share in the hospitality of God's kingdom. At first, the widow, oh, she refused to feed Elijah, operating out of her well-founded fear. Then, however, Elijah spoke a word of promise to her. Do not be afraid. God will provide. There is enough. There is more than enough. This promise from God freed her from the fear and allowed her to trust this foreigner and his foreign God. To embrace life rather than death. What she learned is that God's less is always more. We all have these fears. Is it any wonder that we work 60 to 70 hours a week or more? Is it any wonder that we buy, 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 that our pantries are full to overflowing and our garages hold so many cars? We marvel that this poor woman is willing to give everything she has and risk the death of not only herself, but her son as well. We, we are afraid to ask ourselves whether we could give everything we possess by putting it in the hands of a random stranger, or even for us church people into the hands of our church treasury. And yet, on Thanksgiving, just a few weeks away, we will celebrate the benevolence of the native community who taught our ancestors to farm and fish and hunt in this new but foreign land. Many will sit at a table with strangers and friends alike to thank God for the abundance of God's blessings. Do you suppose that those earliest disciples who shared of all they had recognized that living into God's abundance was an example of on earth as it is in heaven? Do you suppose that as we gather together on Thanksgiving and every Sunday as the body of Christ, trusting that our jug of oil and jar of meal will not turn up empty, do you suppose that we will see and experience amazing things? God is good. And in God's economy, less is always more. Do not be afraid. For thus says Yahweh, the God of Israel, Elijah speaks a word of promise, a word of abundance. There is enough, more than enough. And what about us? We who live in material abundance, who have more than we need, so much more so that our houses and the waistlines of our pants have to grow to accommodate it all. Can we? Will we proclaim God's abundance? There is enough for all. There is more than enough. We Christians do struggle with feelings of scarcity, despite the abundance of God's universe. How often have you heard a church succumb to scarcity thinking as it looks at issues of budget and membership? Ooh, too often. Many congregational gatherings become an exercise in practical atheism the minute issues of finances are raised. Thoughts of God, possibility, creativity are often obscured by laments about what we don't have and the way things used to be. We've heard the widow of Zarephath's mantra coming from our own lips way too often. I'm gathering a couple of sticks so that I may go home and prepare a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. Hmm. I am fully aware that an accurate assessment of our financial and personal situations is essential for the survival and health of individuals, families, and churches. But we progressive Christians often believe too little when it comes to the resources available to us. Realism is essential in our spiritual journey, but always in light of God's abundance. As the philosopher Alfred North Whitehead noted, opportunities are 
always present within the limitations of life. Research, in fact, has shown that in the world of medicine, our attitudes, our prayer life, and our faith can be the tipping point between health and illness, between life and death. As Christians, we are called to affirm that God wants us to have abundant life and that God will provide for our deepest needs. This includes the financial and spiritual needs of struggling congregations and families. When the widow generously shares her meager meal with Elijah, she is connected with the bounty of the God of Israel. One of my colleagues, Bruce Epperly, writes, she discovers in her risky generosity that the abundance of God will supply her basic needs. In our own lives, we find that while generosity does not magically change our bank accounts or reverse the hands of the clock, Open-hearted generosity opens us to experiencing a generous universe in which we discover that we have more time, energy, and money than we previously imagined. In letting go of our stranglehold on our resources, we discover that we are connected with the abundant resources of God. So friends, will we be the means by which God shares that abundance with our neighbors, those on the other side of town, and those on the other side of the world? Will we be the ones who hear and take heart this word of God? Do not be afraid. No need to hoard. No need to fear the neighbor, to close the borders, to circle the wagons. There is more than enough. Will we allow that word of God to free us from our fear and enable us to be the recipients of all the abundance that God offers us through our close neighbors as well as our global neighbors. Trust is leaning into God's character and goodness. It is believing that God does care despite the appearance of our circumstances. But trust comes slowly and must be reconfirmed often in our lives. On this Communion Sunday, and for all eternity, I invite us to hear those words afresh. Do not be afraid. There is enough. In God's abundant grace, there is more than enough. In God's kingdom, less is always more. And let us count our many blessings, seeing what God has done. Amen. In the singing, in the silence, in the hands expectant open, in the blessing, in the breaking, in the presence at this table. Christ, Jesus Christ, be the wine of grace. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, be the bread of peace. In the question On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, 
he gathered around the table with his friends. And after taking the bread, he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take eat. This is my body broken for you. And after the supper, he took the cup, the cup that was awaiting Elijah's return. And after blessing it, he gave it to them saying, drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my love, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, remember me. And so we come to this table, not because we must, but because we may, because we expect and hope to meet Jesus, the beacon and the light of the world. I invite you now to take the bread and to share it with one another by tearing off a piece and giving it to one another there in your home or wherever you are, and then take the cup and dip your bread into the cup remembering the love that God has for each and every one of us through Jesus, his son. Amen. And after the supper, I'm sure that Jesus and his disciples said a prayer. So I invite you to join with me in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples so very long ago. The words will be on your screen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As a beloved people of God, I invite you to go out into the world, recognizing that what you have is a blessing from God and that you can count those blessings, but even more importantly, you can go out and share those blessings. Let us go in the peace and the grace and the mercy of our God. Go in peace.
to, to.